Um, hi, this is Shannon Steimel, and um, this is my online mini conference this week of gratitude. I am recognizing those educators who have influenced my thinking and actually changed my teaching practice over the last year. And so it's my pleasure to introduce today's guest, who is Carolyn Allen, and I will let her introduce herself. Uh, I'm Carolyn Allen. I am a library media specialist in the Hazelwood School District. I am at the elementary level and this is, I think, my sixth or seventh year in the library. I'm actually not really sure. Um, <laughs> I was a classroom teacher also at the elementary level in a different building in Hazelwood for about 10 years prior to that. So, sure. and I'm, I don't know if I'm, do you want me to give me any other details? Or I, I think that's good. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I had been thinking for a long time about how to incorporate makerspace into the library. It was something I felt like I should do, but I wasn't really sure how to do that. And then a couple of summers ago at the METC Summer Institute, um, Carolyn and a colleague of hers presented on this project they had done where they were tying the um, state award nominee books to makerspace activities and library uh, research. And so I just, I loved the, so, the idea so much and it was like, yeah, finally I can figure out how to incorporate makerspace. For me especially, um, you know, I'm at a school that's high poverty and a lot of our kids uh, come to us with um, being grade levels behind in reading. And so whenever I'm making decisions in the library, that literacy piece and how to promote it is, is always really key for me. And so that I think that was one of the reasons why I was having trouble figuring out how to incorporate Makerspace. So um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, how this, this project got started for you, Carolyn? Yeah, um, my one of my colleagues um, who had been a librarian in Hazelwood, um, we were at Mazel, I think it was 2016, it was either 2016 or 2015, um, and we went to a session, and in the session, it was all about using um, maker, maker activities, and sh the presenter did, she had everything real, you know, laid out as far as diff the different books, and um, we really liked tying the makerspace to literacy, um, and then we kind of took that and kind of tacked on and, and decided we wanted to do it more from the show me nominee standpoint. The presentation that we saw, it was, it was more themed, like she did animals with one grade and she did inventors or something with another grade. And we decided since we were already gonna be reading those show me nominees anyway, that that would be a perfect opportunity to tie in some makerspace because we knew those were books that we would want to read. We knew they were, you know, good, good literature that we could, use and we also liked how in that presentation she did a research component and we both liked that we weren't losing some of that library um, skills the research the literacy component so we didn't want to just jump head into makerspace and then lose some of the traditional library skills so that's kind of where we started and then we got together that summer and used the show me books and i think the first year we only picked like three or four books maybe that we did a, a, a lesson on um, just because we didn't want to bite off more than we could chew. Um, and then the years since then, we've kind of expanded it a little bit every year. So that's terrific. That's started. So um, let's jump right into some exa some of your favorite examples um, that you've done. This one was actually one of the first years that we did this, and it was the Tooth Fairy Wars, which if you've never read the book is super cute anyway. Um, and so we took this one. Um, it's about a little boy who doesn't want to let the Tooth Fairy take his tooth. And so he goes through all sorts of things to keep the Tooth Fairy from getting his tooth. Um, and so along with that, we also read the nonfiction book, What If You Had Animal Teeth? And that's a really cute, funny book that gives, um, you know, gives kids some information about different animal teeth. So we were pulling in that research and then um, our maker activity, which you can kind of see a little bit in that picture there. Um, the kids had to create a, or build a box that would keep Nathan's tooth safe from the tooth fairy. So um, they really liked that one. It was funny. I actually had a kid come back to me, I think like last year. Um, and that was what they, one of the things that they remembered about library. And she was, I think, like a fourth or fifth grader and did this when she was a second or third grader. 
So that was kind of cool. That's terrific. I love the way you also pulled in the nonfiction title as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that what you were talking about with keeping that research piece, um, like you've really just kind of tied it all together, like everything we're doing in library with mm -hmm. books and research and then yep. make your space. It, it's just great. Uh, so then you moved into some uh, other book challenges. Yes. Um, Fur Fins and Feathers was, I think, one of last year's books. And the one that we did with that, um, it's also kind of a, also a narrative nonfiction about, um, I don't remember his name. I think his last name was Barrett, um, who started one of the first zoos. And so we read that and we talked about um, different animals that you see at the zoo, different animals that you um, just normally see in the wild. And then um, I think with some grades, we researched and did like read a couple of Pebble Go articles um, about some different animals. And then they got to pick um, uh, an animal habitat that they wanted to build. So basically they were using the Legos and they were building an animal habitat or they had the choice to build um, something from the zoo uh, that related to the book. So again, they were getting a choice and, you know, we talked about how oh, well now if you're building an animal habitat, are you gonna make a house and are you gonna have a car? And so, I mean, we kind of got in some of that more um, fiction, nonfiction, I guess, um, in with that too. So um, that was a fun one. They always love Legos. So anytime we pull out the Legos, that's a good, good activity. Yeah, and you know, you can get Legos just by having some donated by mm -hmm. <laughs> kids that are no longer playing with them too. So uh, yeah, definitely we, low cost uh, activity. Yeah. We were lucky our PTA actually um, gave us the money to buy some because unfortunately I don't have any Legos in my basement. So uh, <laughs> they, were, they were very nice. And I do have, have since then gotten some donated ones as well, but they were really nice and gave me some money for that, which was Terrific. awesome. Um, the Day the Crayons Quit, which is a wonderful, funny, love that story. Um, that one, the kids, and I think I just didn't, couldn't find any pictures of that one, um, but they had to build something that would keep their crayon in its space. So at the story, you know, the crayons, um, they want, basically they want their own space and, you know, they're tired of getting broken and left places. So then the makerspace challenge with that one was they had to build something that would hold the crayons and they had to each have their own space and they couldn't be like tilted. They had to be like standing up or, um, so that one was fun. The kids really liked that one and they came up with some really creative, um, crayon holders or crayon houses, I guess you could say. So that was a fun one. We didn't have quite as much of the research aspect on that one, but um, it was still a fun one. They enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, Old McDonald Had a Truck um, was actually one of the building blocks last year. So it wasn't a show me, but still one of the, um, you know, state books that we have, um, that we read. And that one I did, especially with the kindergarten and first grade is kind of almost more of like an intro to maker, an intro to building. Um, and so old McDonald is building a truck. And then at the end of the story, he gets, uh, he's driving the truck. And so that what the maker challenge was, was they had to build a bridge that would support their truck. And so the, the blue paper you see in the picture is the water because we discovered that um, they needed a visual. So we had a lot of <laughs> flat bridges on the table, the first class I did that with. So um, learned that they needed a visual of, okay, your bridge needs to go up and over this water. So uh, I think with that one, I had some stem bins out um, that I use. And so the kids had to use whatever um, materials were in their stem bins. So everybody's bridge was a little different. Some were with cubes, some were with um, the Kiva planks. Um, I think I even had brain flakes, like all the d different materials. So that was a fun one then to see the different ways that the kids use the materials that they had. So it was, it was kind of a fun one. Yeah, I really love those opportunities for creativity and design thinking. And, you know, with these, it's, it's low pressure. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when they get into design thinking, maybe in their classroom where they've got a bigger project, that can be intimidating. And so I feel like one of the things we can do in the library is, is to kind of you know, help them do this in, in kind of a low pressure way. So, um, yeah, I so agree. when I saw your presentation, I, I loved it. And I thought, okay, how, how can I incorporate this, um, you know, at a middle school level? Um, because obviously a picture book you could read <laughs> within a yeah. library visit. Um, but you know, like a, a Truman or gateway <laughs> book might be a little more difficult. Right. 
And so, although I will say, you know, even at the secondary level, the kids still love picture books um, mm -hmm. being read to them from time to time. So, yeah. um, you know, I think you could definitely still incorporate some of these ideas, even with the older kids, especially when it's, you know, like the design challenge, like, you know, building a bridge or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Um, so as I was thinking about how to adapt this to high school and middle school, I thought, well, what if we did excerpts um, from the book? And so I could book talk the book and do an excerpt, and then the kids could do an activity that was related to that. And so um, it wasn't really, didn't work out with the timing for our library visits, but we do have um, a time, we, an intervention time we call success hour, um, and we have at the middle school, and so we have science teachers that are teaching kind of extra a science curriculum for those kids that don't need to be pushed in math or reading. And so um, I enlisted the help of those teachers to um, come in. And so I would uh, book talk the book and read an excerpt and then they would do a related, um, sometimes makerspace, some, sometimes just STEM activity. So like for Red Queen, for instance, um, they had the different blood, um, you had red blood or silver blood in that book. And so yeah. um, the kids actually did a little bit of research on blood types and then they did a blood type lab. Um, and then some of them came and checked out the, the book too, which was pretty cool um, that that did inspire them uh, to read awesome. that. And then um, another way that I've decided to incorporate this is um, taking the the old books from last year and putting those into uh, take home kits that families can can take home and read the book together, discuss it, and then do a maker activity together as well. Um, we get our um, donated copies of some of the, the Maslow books as part of our book battle. And so there's always extra copies, you know, each year because I don't want to put all of them into the collection. And so I used right. to just give them away or put them, you know, give them to the classrooms. And, and now I have reserved some and put them in these kits. So, um, you know, each one has kind of a different um, activity that goes along with it. So for instance, uh, worst class trip ever, um, really funny book set in the state capitol. <laughs> and some of the um, monuments play a role in the book. And so, mm -hmm. um, the activity in the take home kit is for them to do a little bit of research about something that there's not a monument for yet in Washington DC. Oh. And, then, and then they create or model their, you know, what that, what their monument would be. So, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I've been, uh, kid, the parents have come during parent conferences and open house and, and check those out. And so I'm still kind of working out my system how, of how to get them back <laughs> and then get the, the new kits in their hands. Um, but it's been great to, um, you know, to be sending some of those, those STEM literacy kits out. And, and actually, uh, we even got a grant for, uh, from the Gateway uh, to Innovation uh, group uh, this year to be able to, to get some supplies for those. Um, That's so it's awesome. exciting for us. So um, one of the cool things about this project is um, we are inviting you, um, the audience, to um, you know, collaborate on the ideas. And so if you go to this um, bit.ly link, which is uh, case sensitive, you will see the, all the Mazel State Award books from the 2018-2019 year and a place where we're brainstorming ideas for those. And then there's also a link back to last year's um, list as well. So if you're thinking about um, trying this, uh, you know, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, take a look and <laughs> take a look at what we've already done and see, uh, you know, if you can use some of our ideas. Um, so we definitely encourage uh, crowdsourcing those ideas. So um, Carolyn, something new that you, I know you were planning on incorporating with this was your hyperdocs. Um, so tell me a little bit about how that's gone. Yeah, actually, um, last Last year, so October of 2017, uh, Julie Jameson, who is at Flint Hill in Fort Zumwalt, um, she did a presentation where she took all of the show me books um, and basically that's how she planned out her curriculum. Um, so she basically taught her library curriculum using the show me's. And so, you know, after that presentation, which I thought was awesome, I was like, Julie, I want to help you with this because this sounds great. This is awesome. I want to be able to have all these ide cool ideas that you did. And so we talked and um, what we decided to do when we did that for this year um, was we actually created a hyperdoc for each of the show me books. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> that yeah. sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> it, it was, but um, my kids have done, I, I really like the whole hyperdoc idea. Um, we haven't done all of the show me book hyperdocs, but I've also done some other ones. 
Um, and I really find that my kids are engaged when they are working on the hyperdocs. I mean, when they're on their Chromebooks doing other stuff for me, sometimes, you know, I have a lot of sneaking out to YouTube or Google or, you know, as yeah. fourth and fifth graders tend to do. Um, but I found that when they're working on the hyperdocs, because there are videos and, and different activities already embedded in the hyperdoc, so they're getting some of that video, they're maybe watching a story, um, you know, that is like a read aloud on YouTube, they're really focused and they're actually doing what I want them to do, which is, I mean, the first time I did one and I was like, oh my gosh, they're staying on what they're supposed to be doing. I mean, they <laughs> the story maybe like twice or three times but they're seeing what they're doing they're not searching for random silly tennis shoes on google or something <laughs> um so we ended up doing um a hyperdoc in addition to all the other um ideas for the show me um we did a hyperdoc for each one um and julie um used um and actually if you go to the bit.ly that's on the screen um that is actually the link to our presentation which was made with book creator and we have discovered uh, Book Creator, which is a really fun, um, it's, it's just a cool platform. Um, it was one of the AASL best websites that they put out this past year. So we both um, kind of got into that. And some of the hyperdocs are on Book Creator, and then some of them are on Google Slides. So um, yeah, so we've actually been using the hyperdocs integrated with the Show Me, so kind of cool. Yeah, I love that. I really like too. it, so. <laughs> I feel like the, you know, this idea is just like going off in so many different directions and, and mm -hmm. you know, we're all like pulling inspiration from each other. And I love that, you know, I think um, when you're a librarian, sometimes you're the only one in your building yeah. and, you know, maybe, in, you know, in a small <laughs> academy like mine, the only one in the district. And so, right. um, you know, those opportunities that we have to, to share our ideas with each other, I think are really powerful. So um, thank you so much, Carolyn. I really you're appreciate it. Um, you inspiring me to finally incorporate makerspace into my library. Um, so, you know, through this experience, I know like there's been a lot of trial and error and lessons learned. So I thought we might um, just kind of talk about that for a little bit as well. Yeah, I think some of the biggest lessons I've learned is just start with start small. Like don't, I mean, like the first year we came up with this idea, we didn't plan every single show me book, you know, just even doing one or two here or there. Um, and also we didn't, I didn't jump in with like, oh my gosh, I have all this money. Like, I just don't have a lot of money to be buying tons of materials. So it was start small, you know, and like you said, donated things, um, you know, so using, and some of the things are just, you know, a case of finding old construction paper that teachers probably have in their classroom, you know, hey, I've, I've asked for popsicle sticks and pipe cleaners and all that random stuff. You know, my husband kind of rolls his eyes because we collect all those toilet paper rolls. And he's like, what are we doing with these? He's like, well, I'm going to take them to school for a maker project. And I mean, you know, he just takes yeah. it, puts it in the bag and moves on. So um, <laughs> it's going to be just for being a hoarder, in other words. <laughs> so, I mean, starting small with that, um, I have also learned that sometimes the um, and this is what I know, I've noticed more with the older kids, that sometimes they kind of struggle with um, having like free options, like when I don't give them a specific example. Um, so I know a couple times we've had to do kind of, I've had to take a step back and do things like um, there have been some Rosie Revere kind of activities. That's a great book, um, a great STEM book to read to kind of get the idea of, um, you know, trial and error, making mistakes. Because some of my older kids, it was, they just, they didn't know what to do when I didn't, I said, okay, I want you to build a bridge with pennies. And they were like, well, I don't know how to do that. I can't do that. <laughs> like, well, you haven't even tried. Like, I'm giving you a hundred pennies, figure out what you can do. And I didn't give them pictures of what I wanted. So that was kind of, I've learned that sometimes you have to maybe do some practice with those kind of scaffolding, I guess, opportunities beforehand because some of the kids, the younger kids don't seem to have as much trouble. It's, I think, more the older kids where they've been more into the um, idea of there's a right answer, there's a wrong answer, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So that's one thing I've learned that I kind of have to do a little bit more at the beginning uh, to kind of set them up to be successful in that situation. Yeah. 
you know, I think that, that was a mindset that I had to kind of wrap my head around as well, because when I first started thinking about the activities, it was like I was giving them a recipe for mm -hmm. how to do something instead of letting them invent the idea and just giving them, you know, the open possibilities. And so, um, uh, yeah, I think <laughs> we're so used to, like, the teacher gives you instructions and then right. you follow them, uh, you know, but that's not necessarily what's going to happen in the real world. So, yeah. um, you know, I think this, it's definitely uh, good to get them used to this. Uh, anything else you would add about the your lessons learned? Uh, no, I mean, the kids just really, they enjoy doing it. So, um, you know, just stick it in whenever. It, I, I tend to find that sometimes um, maker stuff, in addition to going well with the, like the show me books, um, it's also fun. It's, you know, around like a holiday, we might, like we read a Thanksgiving book and they built, um, turkey hideouts this past <laughs> week. So, you know, I mean, just, it kind of makes it a little more fun too. um, you know, with something rather than making your standard, draw your hand and make a turkey kind of thing. It, <laughs> yeah. You know, kind of stepped it up a little bit, and, you know, so. No, nope, they, they just really like it. So it's, it's fun to see them getting excited and engaged and also at the same time learning, which sometimes they don't always realize, which is kind of cool. Then they're, they're learning and they don't even realize it. <laughs> yeah, that's the best kind of learning, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, well, since this is part of my Gratitude 180 uh, project, and I'm definitely grateful for you, I thought I might give you a chance to pay it forward. Is there um, a shout out that you'd like to give to an educator who you feel like has um, influenced your, your practice? Yes, I actually kind of already mentioned her, but um, Julie Jamison, who's at um, Flint Hill in Fort Zumwalt, she's the one that I got, you know, after her presentation last year, Google Summit. Um, you know, I, I loved her idea of taking the show me's and really structuring what you're teaching using them. Um, and so, you know, collaborating with her with on the HyperDoc idea and the book creator, I mean, that's been awesome. I mean, I've done probably five or six different HyperDocs this year, not all related to show me's. Um, and it's just, I, I'm, I'm grateful for being the opportunity to work with her on that. And kind of, again, like you said, take this project and it's kind of gotten some different direction and, you know, <laughs> growing several different ways, but, um, you know, it's, I'm, it's always fun to collaborate. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity that to work with her to kind of pull this together. And it's really given me some different things to do this year in the library, which is awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. I follow Julie on uh, Twitter and she always seems to be doing really interesting things. They did like mm -hmm. a, a yeah. STEM Olympics, I think, <laughs> in the year that yeah. they had Olympics. So she, she always seems to have those creative ideas. That's, that's maybe a little, I, I haven't gotten that, that different, <laughs> but it does, it did seem very cool. I'm, whew, maybe need another year to <laughs> prep and plan for that. Well, like baby steps, like you said, right? Yes, like, baby steps. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks again, Carolyn, for uh, having this wonderful idea and sharing it with us. Um, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, collaborate with you. So You're welcome. Uh, I enjoyed it. Okay. Take care. All right. Thank you.